Yes, hello, hello, hello from the domestics. Yes, we're into a fourth week of our inaugural podcast series. They said it wouldn't last, but here we are. We're still alive, we're still kicking, we're powered by Black Sheep Cycling, Cycling Apparel, and it's Wednesday, July the 27th. And look, if you thought the Tour de France was uh, a showstopper in 2022, and it was, well, the inaugural Tour de Femme in its opening three days has provided so much drama, so much controversy, so many emotions, so many stories. It's been a gripping start to the women's Tour de France. And we're here to unpack what is now regarded, can you believe it, after just three days as the biggest cycling tour on the women's calendar. I'm here in France, as I have been for the last few weeks, and I'm following the Tour de Femme as closely as possible apart from uh, riding my bike with a few of my closest friends, but I'm feeling for uh, our fellow domestic, Matilda Reynolds, who's uh, stuck in Brisbane somewhere and watching it all unfold from uh, a different time zone. But Tills, uh, I genuinely am feeling for you. How are you? Who said this podcast wouldn't last? I need names and names and addresses. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's it's. I guess I, I don't feel that far away because the, the coverage has just been absolutely incredible. And I think that is just the biggest difference with this event. And um, look, it's it's. I, I cried before, uh, you know, 5 a.m. this morning with, with our winner of today's stage and, and her post-race interview. And it's just, it's already... It's just a very large wave of emotions that's happening uh, throughout the day with this. And, and we're just not only the coverage, but just the analysis of each stage and the highlights and where you're seeing it. And it made mainstream news last night here in Australia for whether it be the, the right or wrong reasons. But it's just, yeah, I, I feel, I'm not there, but I, I, I certainly feel like feel like I'm a part of it. Yeah, it's very, very special, and we'll talk about uh, the winner of today's stage, obviously, and the emotion in that post-stage uh, interview with Cecilia uh, Ludwig. It was beautiful. Well, let's introduce um, our third amigo, and let's remind you at home that Lee Hollywood Turner, he is on his honeymoon. <laughs> He's sacrificing time with his new wife to be with us, the uh, Domestics Hollywood. How do you do it? Why do you do it? And it's great to have you along. I think he uh, actually just got the urge and he's actually just dropped off the court oh, on my that gone. honeymoon. He's disappeared. <laughs> Mate, he is I reliable is, uh, Hollywood as just a movie him. star writer. I've said it before. It's just, you, you look back and you, 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 you throw the elbow for him to pull through and he's never there. So, yeah, I reckon we just uh, introduce well, look, our what? special guest, to be honest. All right. Well, let's introduce our very special guest. Uh, her name is Carly Taylor. Uh, she's a retired ex-professional cyclist who's actually in France right now uh, working for the naming rights sponsor, Zwift. Carly, T Carly Taylor, welcome to the Domestiques. You can be our third Domestique to replace Hollywood tonight. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I do like a bit of a yarn and a chat. So, um, yeah, it's good to be on and especially amongst this massive week of women cycling. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. All right, hold your thoughts there because Hollywood's back. Hollywood, we were just talking about the fact that you're sacrificing your marriage or your honeymoon by joining uh, us here on The Domestics. <laughs> How do you do it and why do you do it? Just to put into perspective, we've just arrived in, uh, flew from uh, Paris to Milan. We're just at the hotel in at Lake Como. I'm, I'm using the light, I'm, I'm running out of battery, so I put my phone on charge and, of course, the phone overheated and turned off just as you're going to introduce me. So it's been one up after another. But I'm here now. I couldn't miss talking to Carly Taylor and, and uh, about the women's tour because I did watch a lot of it today. All right, let's just kick things off with uh, today's post-stage interview with Cecilia Ludwig, the stage winner, and this is how she reacted to uh, her triumph. Congrats, that's a pure moment of emotions. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, oh, it feels like did you... Such a good comeback after. A f I'm, I have to say it, it's a f it was a fucking shit day yesterday, <laughs> and uh, all losing Marta and crashing and have to come back and and then I. But 
I, I just loved how the team kept the fighting spirit and yeah we knew that today was a super good day and if I yeah, had the legs then uh, I could try and go for the win and, and to actually do it and be a Tour de France stage winner <laughs> oh, and, in, and in this jersey oh my god <laughs> It just it, it doesn't, doesn't get better. <laughs> yeah. Can you explain your sprints? How strong were you to beat Marianne Vos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I realized it yet. <laughs> oh, but it was... <laughs> and I actually... Oh, I, I didn't come into, like, the, the last corner in the best position, but... I just kept fighting, <laughs> and uh, oh, what a victory, man, <laughs> and this is for the team, this is for my team, they did such a good job yesterday, and they kept believing in me, so yeah, <laughs> I love you guys. What a win, and what a year for Denmark. <laughs> yeah, what a year for Denmark. <laughs> Huge congrats. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Cecile Ludwig, what an interview, act, as a matter of fact. Uh, I tell you what, Tills, uh, she cried. I think we all cried with Cecile after that, uh, after that magnificent stage win and, of course, the interview. Yeah, I think you guys messaged me uh, before I was even awake, before 4.30, and, and said you've got to watch the interview. And as soon as you said that, I had a sneaky suspicion who had won. Uh, she has a, She's renowned for giving um, fantastic and raw interviews, but she's just a very much a loved, loved rider, and I think that's what you get out of the women's peloton is that, you know, a lot of them, good or bad, aren't media trained or, you know, they don't have the generic answers that we, we necessarily get out of the men's peloton and, and it's raw and it's incredibly emotional um, for them and you got to love when uh, English is their second language because they don't really have the words around it. They just have to say it exactly how it feels and that's what Cecilia does. She says exactly how she feels and, and you feel it and I think everyone was there with FDJ today just wheeling them on and um, incredible the team stuck by her yesterday after some bad luck and uh yeah it's, it's just another great story that's coming out of the tour absolutely and it, i think it encompasses what uh, sport is all about to uh, hollywood uh, you see it in the footy when you go to the mcg and here we are in france we we, we, we saw it this morning oh mate i loved it because so many riders are robots so it's just mm. good to see someone with passion and spunk just really with that raw emotion i, I, I absolutely Loved it, particularly after FDJ's uh, day yesterday when the frame train derailed uh, one of their main riders. So it was just so good. I was just, I was emotional. I had goosebumps. Saying, oh, you got to watch this to uh, watch it. I was just like, I wanted to cry. I just felt it. I'm a sookie guy and it really got me in. Hey, Carly, I want to get your thoughts because you are on the spot at the finish line every day. What did you make of the whole scenario? Yeah, definitely how they turned it around after yesterday. I was actually standing next to the team manager, Stefan, of FDJ at the time yesterday when Marta and all the shit was going down. Um, and you just saw him and how heartbroken he was. And then to see them turn that around and how they rode as a team today, it's pretty impressive. And yeah, I... Cecile, she does the best interviews. Like, you kind of like, I forgot that she was even in that little bunch coming towards the end. Um, she hid so well and, um, yeah, very impressive ride by her. Carly, I just want to ask you about uh, yesterday's chain of events. It was horrific uh, what happened on the road. And I was there at the finish line in Provence, or Provence and uh, I tell you what, uh, what I saw was just absolute carnage. Um, I mean, there were medics just uh, running around everywhere. There, of course, was the throng of the media trying to get some interviews. And uh, I saw one rider, I couldn't work out who it was, who was gasping for air. I just think uh, she was just uh, dehydrated um, by the whole, by the whole uh, perhaps, experience. I'm not quite sure. What can you tell us about your experience at the finish line yesterday for Stage 2? Yeah, I think it was pretty chaotic out there and a lot of nervous energy. Normally at the start of a tour, there is that nervous energy anyway. And then it's the first ever women's, the Tour de France femme of X Swift. So that just like took the, that nervous energy and the, they're just, they're like just, 
they were taking that there was people taking risks and um i think the wind as well um played a massive part of it but yeah i think towards the end a lot of the riders to be honest were just happy that it was that, that they survived um hopefully in an okay position as well and um yeah i think a lot of teams probably had a bad day out there yesterday and today um wanted to kind of capitalize before the for the gravel stage tomorrow yeah, I think, uh, look, a lot has been said about uh, stage two and, and Carly's exactly right. Like, look, at the, sure, there were a few riders who were riding out there like they were an avatar on Zwift, but the, you know, the, it, the, there is the Tour de France effect. Um, and so not only is this the biggest race, um, all of the coverage, you got to imagine that every rider out there um, all their family, all their friends, all people in their community who have no idea what they do, they're all saying to them now, oh, I, I, I'm trying to see you on TV or, you know, there's this, all this energy around it. And I think the biggest thing, like, we can really take away, and, you know, I I've, I've obviously feel for those that crash. Um, I think there's been a huge pile on with Nicole Frayne as well. And so just trying to, you know, we know her. We know there's a, bit, a human on the other side of that and never would have, you know, wanted to have caused or been malicious in that retrospect. But I think the two biggest things I took out of yesterday was how important it is to stay calm in those situations, um, there was a huge amount. You could see the desperation and the stress, uh, which caused a lot of those crashes. And just and that's what Belgium and Netherlands and European racing uh, really, really teaches you um, to stay calm in those chaotic situations. And then also to not comment in the moment. You know, it's. It, I think that's what we saw yesterday, where there's not media liaisons in these teams, and they are small teams that a lot of these uh, teams have, and so. To not have, you know, you, you saw a lot of raw comments that were happening, which on reflection, they probably would have changed. But yeah, they were the two biggest things I sort of came out of yesterday. But I think everyone was just so grateful that it um, was over that stage. And there's a lot of riders who had to take stock. And then I think what we've seen in stage three is just the cream of the crop going, get me out of here and trying to really separate themselves from potentially the, the other parts of the peloton, that which may not be as strong. Oh no, I reckon like so this tour so far has already been great. You've got the first stage around, you know, the big showcase, which is great. But then the GOAT wins on stage two, which was great. The GOAT was there and with, of course, Marianne Boss I'm talking about. Then stage three today, that selection at the end, uh, Van Gluten gets tailed off, gets back on, you think she got enough to sprint. And then obviously that finish with the Danish champ delivering. But what I want to know is, do you think um, Ali, you're there. Are the riders pissed off at the uh, Australian National Road Champion for what happened or is it just forgotten and it's only on social media where the anger and the beat up is? I think like at the end of the day, it's a bike race and crashes happen. And I don't think anyone goes into a bike race wanting to cause, a, like she didn't cause it, but wanting to crash. Um, and it was a part where she was actually a bit back and she might've had her head down, not paying as much attention to what was happening just in front. So I think like, yeah, I wouldn't say that there's like that vibe around it, um, but definitely I can understand how sometimes the media and especially when you're not at the race, um, you're just seeing what you see on Twitter and things like that. And um, yeah, she's at, l at least like a lot of the girls that were went down are OK. And that's the main thing. You know, I was there at the finish line, as I said yesterday, and I think uh, most of the crowd and I tell you what, the crowds were huge on stage two and from what i saw in stage three I, three I wasn't at the finish today but i was pretty close two kilometers from uh, the finish having a couple of beers in the uh, the old town square there um but that's beside the point but uh, what i did notice yesterday carly and tills you can come in as well mariana voss she's absolutely she's cleaned up in almost well if she has cleaned up in every discipline in her career what which stems back to 2006 that's 16 years but when she stepped onto the podium got herself the stage win and then was presented with the yellow jersey, I was really surprised to see her in tears. It was such an emotional moment. Now, I know it's the inaugural Tour de France, but she's done it all. It surprised me. Did it surprise you? I think that just really shows how big this is for the riders and for women's cycling. When you've got, like, the best of all time being that emotional um, on a stage win and getting yellow, that's how much it means to these um, ladies racing. And also, like, 
for the women and everyone that's been a part of making it happen as well. I think that every day when I've seen some ex-pros um, on the side of the road watching these ladies race, um, everyone's so emotional. And um, it's awesome to see a rider like Marianne Voss sh show you how much it means to her when exactly right. Uh, she's just won everything throughout her career. And, um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely um, just shows the person behind the rider. Yeah, I think Mariana Voss, like that's the story we want to focus on from yesterday. The uh, I, she must ha she must have like a full time employee on her Wikipedia page. Like I think Daniel Lloyd tweeted that she personally uh, has won more races than the whole of Yumbo Visma's men's team. So the whole of the men's team, it's just it's incredible. But also, what's but she has reacted to those wins uh, since since the start as the same. Every win she takes, she takes. She doesn't take it for granted. She reacts like it's her first win. And I think, as Carly was saying, um, you know, Mariana Voss was around the table, the round table with ASO, asking them, pleading with them, that that and petitioning them. She started the petition around having a Tour de France fam. So yeah, it's just for it to come full circle like that. It wouldn't have been right if she wasn't an, in the yellow jersey at some point. And so um, I think you know we're we're certainly getting our fairy tale there. Uh, what I what what I wanted to say was that picture that was on the chat today of the uh, I won't say the name the young girl watching the uh, women's Tour de France that, that made me emotional as well because it's these young kids who will be watching their heroes or their future heroes on TV and that's going to get more girls into or more women into cycling so this is massive on so many um, on, on such a large scale and. The more, the more you see of women's racing, the more you get to know the riders, the more you get your favourites. Like I said the other week, um, Matilda, how I liked that Marta. Now, I know she's out now, but you just pick up on favourite riders and then you follow it so it's more interesting. It just builds and builds. So it, it really is such a massive moment. Yeah, and one one thing that we're... Um, we're uh, one thing they're doing, which is, Carl, you would have seen this, that they've actually got sort of the juniors or, like, the local uh, local women's races are actually doing laps like a race on the actual course um, before the pros come through. And so can you imagine, like, the inspiration of that, being at the event, riding on the course, like... Oh, God, it'd just be incredible. And that, that image, Lee, that you're referring to, she's our youngest black sheep, uh, the daughter of our, our founder um, at Black Sheep. And so, and she, you know, there's this video footage of her just watching the Tour de France femme. She's eating and she's just obsessed. She can't take her eyes off it. And I, I would have done anything to have had that opportunity at that age. You know, I was watching um, football players pissing in pot plants and that was about the only inspiration that I had at that age. There was no visual of women and just, and also just the meaning that, that women can do it. And yes, these crashes are horrific, but they get back up and they go again and the emotion and there's just, oh, there's so much going on there. I, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I think like one of the best things too about women cycling is how much more willing the women are to work with like the media, doing interviews, doing photos. And mm. um, Cecilia, yeah. she did like photos with some of the young ones before a stage win. And that's where like these these kids that are at the start lines, they're getting like their caps and the little musettes and um, getting the photos with what are probably going to be their heroes for this next period when hopefully um, that women, women the cycling keeps on getting that momentum because yeah exactly what you said Matilda there's it's with all of this media coverage and with everyone pretty much watching the women's Tour de France femme at the moment um it, like yeah a rising tide lifts all ships and um it's kind of like really going to be um setting women's cycling up for um the development and yeah more women getting on bikes because they can see that women are actually racing one of the biggest um, takeaways on GC that we saw was that Annemiek van Vluten was out the back. Uh, now, it has been reported that she was sick, but I was really surprised um, that the, the riders in front of her weren't chopping off harder to get a bigger gap on her. Like, the riders are, the, the, her, the contenders and competition are going to need quite a big buffer going into those final stages. And then also we saw just again some weird tactics out of SD Works. It's still not clear if it's Van Vluten or uh, Morn Passio that they're sort of working for. It sort of feels like no one's willing to make a hard call there to say we're going all in on one rider. But yeah, Carly, what, what did you make of today and, and the GC and, and what's to come? 
Yeah, well, coming into t- to today, actually, Anamique was probably my favourite for the overall GC and definitely was surprised um, when she was um, getting dropped. But also, like, you have to remember, Cecilia and Voss also got dropped in that last 15K and got back on. And I think um, from what I have heard, SD Works are working for Demi and Ash did a lot of work for Demi earlier on. But then when Demi crashed, they switched roles and then it was for Ash and for Ash to get third on the stage today after what she had done for the whole tour. I really think like Ashley Mormon Passio is probably one that I'm, I think is one of the strongest and would be like fighting for the overall GC win, especially when you hit day seven, which is like the real mountain day and obviously the final, st- the final stage as well. Um, but yeah, very in, like I was surprised by a few um, that were getting or suffering on today's stage. But it sounds like as if it was a pretty hard day from from what I heard. Hey, listen, I just want to show you something. We spoke about the blanket media coverage um, earlier on. This is what I found in the local, uh, well, not the local, the national newspaper today. It is uh, an ad for France De, which is the uh, free to air national television network here, and on the in the ad, the full page ad is Tiffany Cromwell. And I guess this basically just shows the commitment that uh, the French have towards this women's tour de femme. It's not just a blow in event, it is just as prestigious, I believe, from what I've seen so far on the ground, from what I'm reading in the newspapers here, as the men's tour de France. But sure, it hasn't got the history. Uh, the men's Tour de France goes back to 1903. It's only taken, what, 119 years for the women uh, to have their own race. But you've got to crawl before you can walk, as we said a couple of days ago. And uh, what I saw today and what I'm seeing over the last three days is total commitment by the French. So it's it's a sure sign that the women's Tour de France is here to stay. The domestic by Black Sheep Sideman. Hollywood, what did you make of today's stage? Oh, today's stage, as I said, I watched it and or watched parts of it because I'm sort of traveling around when I can get internet when I can't. And uh, I love it. Like, I'm genuinely interested at the time. Like, yeah, after the men's tour, you want more. And then this is what, this is just perfect. It's like more everyday, exciting racing. And as I said, the GOAT winning, the first stage, around, you know, the showpiece and the GOAT winning Marianne Voss uh, second. And then today's emotionally charged winner. And that interview, which you knew I was so excited about. And I know someone who's no, I know someone who's very, very proud of that win today is uh, Miles Scottson, her boyfriend. He, uh, I saw he posted something on Instagram. He's on, I'm on a chat group with him and he's, he is pumped about this and, and, and as he should be. Tills and you too, Carly. The Judo Donna was held just, uh, what, three weeks ago. The Women's Tour de France has already been rated as the, uh, the biggest cycling tour for women in the world. Now, do you think it, it's time now to move the Judo Donna started earlier uh, than what it has been in early uh, what early june or is it early july early july um it's too, do you believe that the two events are just too close together you can take that one carly considering you actually raced and done quite well at the juro um yeah i think in the past like obviously when the juro was in the calendar there was never another massive stage race two weeks after and um i like if Matilda is saying that Anime um, was sick today, I still think that backing up after a 10 day tour and then having only two weeks to do and the biggest stage race in the world, it's why some riders were choosing to either not race the Giro or pull out early. Mariana Voss left the Giro early to go to like being the best form that she could be for the tour. So. I do think it kind of makes more sense to be more aligned with when the men's Giro d'Italia is as well, because when the women's Giro is on, it's competing against the first stages of the men's Tour de France, and that's pretty hard to compete against. So, yeah, I would probably, as a rider, if I was still racing, would like it earlier. Um, But, um, yeah, I think it probably comes down to, like, the race organisers and calendars and things like that. Like, it's pretty easy to say that, but, um, yeah, that would be my two cents. (laughs) Carly, I want to ask you, I saw you yesterday um, at the finish line and you said some really interesting things to me tell me what your involvement is now with Zwift how important is it for Zwift to be involved with the Tour de Femme and uh, what what are the plans 
Yeah, um, I work in the social team with Swift and I kind of had started Swift like working with them since I retired, so almost four years ago. Um, but yeah, the company really has been wanting to help improve women's cycling and kind of like be that set that example too. Um, and there's a lot of people in the company that have made this happen and are so passionate about it. And I know that you probably have seen a few interviews with um, Kate Veronu and Michelle Moore, who um, both have been instrumental behind this, but also it comes from the very top um even above and like with the ceo eric min and um yeah those that are supporting and wanting to back it as well and this is a four-year project and this is the first year that we're in at the moment and i think that it's just going to get even better and better as the years go on but um yeah it's very as a ex cyclist that has obviously women's cycling has been my life it it makes you feel very proud when you're working with a company that has those same values and desire to improve a sport that is something that you love so much. So yeah, it's been such a, it's been an emotional week, I think for everyone here on the ground, seeing it all come together. Um, and I think it's gonna be a massive um, next few days as well. So yeah, very stoked to be here in France, getting to watch it and be amongst the action, that's for sure. Honestly, we've talked about Zwift so much on this podcast, I need to send them an invoice. But obviously, like, I think there's been, you know, you sort of say, um, <laughs> build it and they will come. And it just feels like with women's cycling that the crowd has always been there and they're just standing outside yelling for them to, to, to bring an event like this. And it has taken the investment from Zwift to get it over the line. And I think uh, the numbers that we're seeing out of the viewership uh, is, is just really impressive. There's been no drop off from day one. I think there's 3 million viewers uh, on, on, on Eurosport. Uh, but I think if anyone's listening, the biggest thing that people can do is just to consume it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really uh, to turn it on, to engage in the conversation. Uh, you know, obviously we're very fortunate as well in Australia to have SBS following all the coverage. And so view it, have it on. If you're not, if you can't watch it right then and there, have it on in the background because it just certainly helps and shows what we always knew that there's an in enormous engaged audience and that's just going to grow the sport more and more. Tills, is it on GCN in Australia? Because I've been watching it on GCN here and the coverage as you know, is first class. The commentators, they have magic. Is it on GCN in Australia as well? No, because it's on SBS, which like, I think we're pretty fortunate because there are quite a few countries who aren't showing it. So um, we're very lucky to have coverage all around. And it is important to, uh, I, I guess, yeah, show the viewership locally because that's only going to grow the investment uh, locally in cycling as well. So yeah, they, those who not, shall not be named. <laughs> One thing that really concerns me is the uh, the dropout of riders. And sure, there was a horrible day yesterday, stage two, but there's 131 riders left, 138, I think, started. The attrition rate is already high. Well, I think uh, off the back of you know, yesterday, was was it was more of a big of a day for, for how big those names were that dropped off. And I think uh, I, I, we just got to pause and I think just feel... Uh, a lot of sadness for Amanda Spratt. She is the queen of, of Australian cycling. Uh, she's had a very rough two years. Uh, she had COVID at the Juro, which was her, her um, goal for the year, and she had to pull out early. She got back just in time for the tour, uh, was looking good, and had you know was caught up in, in, in that significant crash yesterday and hasn't been able to restart. And so, um, yeah, she. I, I am though excited to see where she's going to go. The room, you know, it has been announced that she is leaving Bike Exchange, which will be a, a, a huge change. And I think she might be going to Yumbo Visma, but let's just start that rumor. I'm not. I'm not too sure, but I'm trying to think. Mate, there, DSM. Who needs a rider like Spratty? But yeah, I think her fans will absolutely follow her because she's just the biggest legend inside and outside the peloton. And she has really similar qualities to Marion Voss in the way of these legends of the sport. They carry themselves so incredible with inside the peloton. They're never screaming. They're never yelling. They're delightful to ride near. And I just think you can take away a lot of learnings from the way that, Mar uh, that Marion Voss, but also Spratty, uh, carries herself in, inside and outside the peloton. Absolutely, they present themselves so well. Mariana Voss, uh, 
Um, what do you think, uh, Carly? You're, you're on the ground there. Do you think she can hang on to the yellow jersey right until the end? And, and it wouldn't bother me if she did. Um, I reckon she'll hang on to it probably until stage seven. And then I reckon stage seven and eight is going to when you're going to get um, the real shake up because like tomorrow it's a gravel stage. She is one of the most skillful riders in the peloton. This is probably going to be a stage that she's like loving and going to bed tonight, like excited about the carnage that's going to happen tomorrow because the gravel is going to really split things up and make it aggressive <laughs> racing. Um, but yeah, I think these next few stages are probably going to suit her and it's not until we get to the real mountain that we might see her suffering a little bit Can't but then again she probably she is a phenomenal athlete well, and probably could keep it <laughs> carly question how are the australian girls going the other australian girls are there how are they going I think um, Grace Brown like rode really well today um, for FDJ in like a team role. A lot of the other Australians, um, Nicole Frank did have a really good stage still yesterday, even after her crash. She still actually was like right up there. I think she finished around 12th or something. And considering wow. how badly she went down, like I think that's a pretty actually amazing result. Um, but yeah, I think like a lot of them probably have more team roles um, where they're working for their leader, especially with Team Bike Exchange. Um, and yeah, for me, to be honest, sometimes it's hard to see everything that's going on during the race because when you're working at a race, you end up not actually getting to watch the race. Um, so I've been kind of like trying to catch up a lot um, on socials and like the live um, stories going out and stare at someone's phone when I'm walking past trying to give them a musette. <laughs> <laughs> or a cap. Yes. And who's your, pick, who, who's your pick for stage four? Um, I think Vollering, um, Demi might have a good one tomorrow. Uh, I, yeah, I'm actually not sure. We've been talking about this a little bit um, at the dinner table and placing our bets. But, um, yeah, I think that SD works. Um will ride really well, but I kind of like, you can't not put your money behind Voss a little bit too. Um, just how strong she is and um, that type of circuit. But can I pick two? <laughs> <laughs> Those will be my two. Oh, sorry, Carly, now that you're there and you're experiencing this, do you, do, you, do you look in the mirror and go, fuck, I retired too early. I wish I'd be still going now. Do you miss not being part of the, the action? I feel like you can't not be here and think that at least one point during this week. And I've actually seen a lot of my old teammates here, um, like Gracie Elvin before in um, the first day in Paris and Shara Gillow, who now is um, uh, works for SD Works and Liz, like the DS is for Jumbo Visma, who used to be my teammates. And um I think everyone, part of you kind of has that of like, oh, imagine if I was to able to hold on. But then I think deep down, everyone did retire for a reason. And it's just like nice to be watching it and seeing those people that was pushing for this to happen and being able to, for them to be here watching it as well and being a part of it. But yeah, maybe, um, especially the final stage, that's that climb is one that's a little bit special to me. So it'll, it's definitely, a, um, I wish I was in the form that I could race in this, that's for sure. You know, Hollywood uh, Tills, there are so many Australians here who are here watching the Tour de Femme uh, who have got new employers. Uh, Carly's one, and she rattled off a few other names there, and I'm one as well. So uh, I wouldn't miss this for the world, and I'm so grateful that I am here. I'm here for Bike Style Tours. I might as well give them a plug. But um, to be up and close with uh, by watching the women has just shed a new uh, appreciation for what they do. And the carnage yesterday just uh, horrified me. I mean, we have seen it with the men's races over the years, but nothing like yesterday. Some of those crashes were horrible. So, uh, look, I've got a deep appreciation for what I'm seeing, and so do the tens of thousands of people that have lined the street, Carly, uh, at the finish line where I've been, and, of course, on the Champs-Élysées on stage one. It's just going to give this women's game a big kick, and it's been a long time coming. I'm so happy for you all. 
Do I send bike style? Yeah, yeah that sounds great. No comment. <laughs> bike style to us? Do I have to send them an invoice or what? <laughs> Isn't that right? Between, between bike style tours, no, to Swift and Giants, <laughs> welcome to the sponsors of the domestics. <laughs> I, I, I actually thought Shimano <laughs> was. <laughs> 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 or did Shimano just pay off Shran? <laughs> don't, don't. Don't mention the S word. <laughs> all I want you to do, all I want you to do, Carly, is to uh, send us more of those caps. That's how we met, what, 48 hours ago. <laughs> and I've obviously known, knew about you as an ex-professional cyclist, but when you gave me that cap, it all fell into place, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the things that a bloody cycling cap gets you. <laughs> but, yes, we do have a little bit. Um, so right. I'll try to save a little bit of swag on the sly. Um, but now that I've said this out loud, I'm just really getting yeah. really and wheeling. <laughs> dealing and wheeling. God. I'm just a scammer, oh, yeah. but I've doing it yeah. for you, Tills. I want you Mate. to get a cap. You've already, already got, got one, but I'm doing it for Hollywood as well. I want him. I know people. Well, she can have people. another one. and get, get We'll get one to Hollywood. Right, team. Thanks for joining us, Carly. Thanks, Tills. Thanks, Hollywood. And thank you at home. And remember, tell your friends about the domestics. Carly, I want you to tell everybody in Stage 4 how good this podcast is, <laughs> if only for your appearance, okay? <laughs> Thanks Will so much. Talk to you soon. Bye now from the Domestics. The Domestics. The Domestics by Black Sheep Cycling.